Hi, I'm Georgie, cosmetic chemist and trainer here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm gonna to be talking you through the A, B, C and E vitamins that we commonly use in our skin and hair formulations. Firstly, we have vitamin A, known as retinol or retinol palmitate. Now, if we had an abundant store of vitamin A in our body, we would have less photo damage, we would have less damage to our DNA of our keratinocytes, and therefore this would suppress the melanin production. Our cell turnover would increase, our pore size would reduce, and overall our fine lines and wrinkles would look and appear much smoother. This is dose specific, mind you. So the more amount of vitamin A we have, the better protection. But unfortunately we can't just add a whole heap of vitamin A to our formulas as there are regulatory inputs to consider. Please check your country's regulatory inputs for vitamin A when you're formulating with this. It does have some formulation considerations, so it needs to be incorporated with a pH of six to seven, and it also needs to be added in under 40 degrees. It also needs close monitoring throughout its shelf life, just to ensure there are no instability issues. For all its great benefits on the skin, it can be mildly irritating. So when we're formulating with vitamin A, we need to take this into consideration and add some anti-irritant materials to counteract this effect. Next, we've got vitamin B. Vitamin B3, which is known as niacinamide, is a common one that we do use in skincare preparations. This will inhibit the transfer of melanosomes from the melanocytes to the keratinocytes. And if we can inhibit this action, we can suppress the amount of pigmentation that comes to the surface of the skin. And it also has a brightening effect as well. Another common vitamin B we use is B5, also known as panthenol. This is a great addition to your hair care formulations as it provides a great shine to the hair. And in skincare formulations, it's quite calming and soothing. And it also prevents transepidermal water loss. Vitamin B is a great addition to your formulations if you're treating anti-aging skins that are dull, have pigmentation, and it's even really good for acne prone skins. Vitamin B are generally stable over a wide pH range, so they're pretty easy to formulate with, providing you do add them under 70 degrees for short periods of time only. Typically we add vitamin B at around one to five percent. Now at one percent you'll get that brightening effect on the skin and at five percent the higher concentrations it will inhibit that transfer of melanocytes. Another key vitamin we use is vitamin C which is a key nutrient for cells. Unfortunately our body doesn't produce vitamin C so just as we supplement vitamin C internally we should externally be applying vitamin C to keep our cells healthy. Applied topically, it'll provide great antioxidant benefits and it fights free radical damage, which can be caused from pollution, UV exposure, stresses, and other environmental factors. And if we use it in higher concentrations, it inhibits the melanin formation, which will create that whitening effect on the skin. It comes in a variety of forms and some do degrade more than others in formulas, which cause those pH changes and color changes. These can sometimes obviously render the formulation useless. So we do need to make sure we choose grades that are more stable, such as ascorbyl phosphates. These are generally very stable as long as they're formulated with a pH of six to seven. Lastly, we've got vitamin E, known as tocopherol, tocopherol acetate, mixed tocopherols. Now it's important to note that while all these grades are great on the skin and provide antioxidant benefits, not all will provide oxidation protection for your formulas. So it's important when you choose your vitamin E that you're choosing the correct one. Just remember vitamin E is heat sensitive, so it does need to be incorporated into your formula under 40 degrees. And be careful not to use too much. It's not a case of more is better. It can actually have a pro-oxidative effect if it is used too much and can also increase skin sensitivity. You'll also need to be aware of packaging considerations when you're formulating with vitamins as a lot of these are light sensitive. So choosing an opaque package over a clear may be more beneficial. So now you can see why A, B, C, E vitamins are great additions to your formulas and some things to consider when formulating with them. If you'd like to read more on formulating with vitamins, you can read our blog, or if you'd like to learn how to formulate with vitamins, you can enroll in our Diploma of Personal Care Formulations. 
please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to receive notifications on our videos. And don't forget, if you'd like to access all our free videos, you can contact us on the email provided on the screen. Happy formulating.